Rick in the building. All right. What's going on, my guy? Nothing, man. Just, just shutting down. You know what I'm saying? About to try to get me something to eat. Just enjoy the rest of the day, whatever. You know, just do you know, do this podcast with you. You know what I'm saying? Have a little truck talk. All right. It's all what right. it is. All right, I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate you jumping on with me, man. Thank you very much. Ain't nothing going on too much up here in the great state of Utah. You know, just chilling, waiting on okay. my waiting on my delivery for tomorrow morning. I already got uh got this paid. I mean, got this day paid for. So we good. We good over here. So, uh, okay. so let's get into it, man. So, uh. Let's start with a little bit of background about you. Like, how, you know, how long you been in the truck? How long, uh, what you was doing before trucking? You know, what's up? Yeah, um, I've been trucking for about six years, going on seven. I've um, just been doing flatbed, you know. I run the Northeast, like, you know, mainly like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, you know, Massachusetts, that area. I kind of like to stay there. Cause it's not too competitive over here. You know what I'm saying? You can kind of grab what you want, but it is kind of slow right now. But you know, at the same time, when it's when it's up, when it's on, man, it's, it's easy pickings. I, I take what I want. You know, a lot of dudes they like to they scared of like Brooklyn, you know, Long Island, Jersey. So I grab, I scoop that up. It's yeah, like yeah. on reserve for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you um, you you can have that, bro. You you can have all of that. <laughs> all all of that. Thank you. Yeah, you you can have <laughs> all of that, bro. All of it. I'm talking about Brooklyn, <laughs> the boroughs, the Bronx, all of that, man. I seen my guy, uh, Choice Mass. He's uh he's a YouTuber from uh New York and he just posted a video of of just driving in Brooklyn, man, and it's just you know, he's in a he's in a long nose Peterbilt. He's a flatbedder yeah. also. You know, he's driving down this narrow ass street with with cars on the side that's not giving a not giving a hoot and and bikers just people just you know I'm like man no nah, I can't do it I can't do it I'm I'm sorry but I was saying like I was over the road and the thing about like New York it's all mental a city is a city to me you know what I'm saying Dallas is just as tight you know what I'm saying you know Colorado could be tight Los Angeles like you know Long Beach I've been in all the areas you know what I mean San Diego. It's all the same. It's just like, I guess, you know, everybody kind of hype it up. Yo, New York bad. New York's bad. I'm like, yo, Baltimore's bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? D.C. is bad. It's just, I rather, I just found, like, what works for me. I found the lane where I could be able to manage my home time more effectively opposed to, you know what I'm saying, just kind of like, you know, spending like, you know, two, three weeks over the road. That's cool. It was cool, you know, before the pandemic. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where I would travel and see certain places. But once the pandemic hit, all that got old. You know what I'm saying? And I was in a position where I was running. Where I was making the same kind of money I was making over the road. So I said, man, forget it. Why Why do that when I could just sleep in my bed? But, you know what I'm saying? Are you from the Northeast? Are, 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 you, are you from the New York yeah, area? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was born in the Bronx. I mean, I'm in the Bronx right now. Okay, and, uh, okay. But I'm currently... I'm currently yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm on here. Uh, <laughs> Bronx is uh, Biggie's area, ain't it? Biggie Smalls? No, nah, that's Brooklyn. Oh, okay, okay, Brooklyn, yeah. okay. Well, well, shit. All, all yeah, of all yeah, of it is all of it is legendary. Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, all of them produce legendary rappers, man. I, that's you know yeah. New York. You know New York hip hop back in the day was 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 all about lyricists you know what i'm saying it was all about yeah. it was all about lyricists and 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 word word speak and all like that today's today's music <sighs> today's music is garbage it's, it's more like pop music you know what i'm saying it's yeah. more like pop music uh, all right doing like a lot of drill stuff all right six years you know ago all right six years ago you uh you you came on the the trucking scene with what you was doing before then? I mean, before you got into trucking. Yeah, I was a warehouse manager, and I was on salary at the time. And I wasn't really bringing, I was bringing home peanuts, man. Mm. So I was hourly, and then it was like, you know, once you come salary, you know, it, it, it'd be more better for you. That shit is a goddamn lie. The lie detective determined that was a lie. 
you better off just paying hourly, man, because you're going to put some hours in. So I'm scrambling, right? The crazy thing, I'm scrambling. I'm doing everything. I'm I'm damn near inventory coordinator, quality control. I'm, you know, managing the warehouse. I'm doing shipping and receiving, production analysis. I'm working with the, the, the president of the company, letting him know the process of unprocessed materials and processed materials. I'm reorganizing the whole warehouse, you know what I'm saying? Because I had a structure set up. When I was at my last company, which was a uh, recycle, was another company, mm-hmm. and I was just rearranging the whole, just running the whole damn facility. And a truck driver came to me. He was a uh, dude out of Philly, and he pulled me to the side. He was like, "Yo, you scrambling, man? Ooh, yo, what you bringing in?" I was like, "I ain't bringing in nothing." He showed me a pay stub. Or like it was like a half a week. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't even a full week, and it was at the time it was nine hundred. I was like, yo, that's decent. He's like, I ain't even doing nothing. He said, I came home about two years ago. He mm-hmm. said, man, you, you need to get into trucking, man. He told me that, and that stuck with me. So I started, you know, studying the book or whatever, got the permit, and I wound up, you know what I mean, taking the test. I failed that. I failed it twice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The third time, I was like, all right, I'm in there. Yeah, how, and I started driving trucks. How, yeah. how, how was it? Now, you, you, you up in New York taking... The, yeah. the the you know going to trucking school where well wait 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 let me let me let me rewind it did you go to trucking school in New York or did you go to a trucking school to a different school or did you go through uh, what I did a was um, I was in I was in New York uh it was like a it's like a tr- it's a trucking school but I didn't enroll in the full program what I basically did was. Um, just apply to take, you know, road, uh, like the road classes or whatever. Like I didn't take, cause the whole class, the whole program was like 10 G's, but you could, you could rent the truck for the day, like for uh, 45 minutes for two fifty. You know what I'm saying? So I did the two fifty. It came out to like maybe 2,500 of me, of, you know, the payments or whatever. And then I wound up doing it like that because I didn't have 10 G's. So I was slowly making payments in it. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I got my CDL. I know a lot of dudes, they, you know, they went to school, they pay like 10. Some dudes even pay like 20 grand to get their CDL. Hey, me, hey, uh, man, it's, it's no joke. I, I hear, I hear the schools. I mean, you, you, the, the, like the second, third, fourth person that told me that, that the schools up in the Northeast ain't no joke, man. The young lady I talked to about a while back, she told me that the school up in Boston was 11K, bruh. That's how, I mean, that's not, that, that's too much for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, some dudes, you can get, some programs, you can get a grant. Uh, you know, the government might help you out. Might, you might look up that way, but I don't even think they're really giving them out like that no more. Before, they was giving them out like hotcakes. But they slowed down. They started, uh, you know, doing other things or whatever. Yeah, like, they, they started, they try to push out more electricians and welders now. Yeah, they changed. Well, in New York anyway, because dudes wasn't trying to dudes wasn't trying to uh, drive. They wasn't really trying to have, push out truck drivers in New York. Cause, you know, New York is not really trucker friendly. No, they give out tickets. They do all like mm-hmm. they do not like trucks over here. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's crazy. So, uh, six years, man. You 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 you've been in the game. What what you know? What what type of what type of experiences that you have learned since you started? Up until now, what, what what do you think? What do you see in change when you was driving? Um, you know, experience wise, you know, like just to be on, just I thinking outside of the box. I think it's weird when I tell people it is, but trucking taught me how to understand and read people better. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I had once I like. Got I came in, I came encounter of course like more people doing you know during truck and travel over certain places went to Cali over there just understanding the language of certain areas and it just kind of like put me in a different mind space and kept me open and you know don't be so quick to judge somebody off of you know certain things on how they look or whatever because you can learn a lot from just about anybody you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. So let's uh, let's uh, let's fast forward. Are you are you a company driver or are you a uh, you you're owner op? I'm an owner operator. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'm owner operator. Okay, so uh, yeah. how uh, you know how long you been an owner operator, and when did you make the you know the 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 transition from 
company driver to owner operator within the six years? For about three and a half years, um, I made the transition around 2018. I was, act- I was actually working at Western Express, and um, I was at least on operator over there. And the thing about Western Express at the time, I don't know how they move now, but I had got a brand new truck for 140000 Well, it wasn't brand new. It was still kind of used because I got it when it was like 96,000 miles, but I got it brand new on the company side. Mm-hmm. So um, I was able to go sign up for lease purchase with the same truck. So I basically had it from start to finish. And once I got down to like 68000 they just they slowed me down. It mm-hmm. went dry. I mean, to the point where I had settlements for like two, three thousand, which is okay. To the point where that it was like two, three hundred, and it was like they was just running me just enough to pay the truck. Mm-hmm. To the point where I'm like, yo, it's not even worth it. I might as well walk away and get my own. But the thing about it, well, at the time, Western Express had seasons like it was patterns. I was reading them. I'm like, see, they like to slow you down mm-hmm. and then speed you up. It'd be spurts because mm. if they got they low on company drivers. That's when that's when the lease operators eat. But as soon as they got a spike in company drivers, owner operators they don't eat nothing. You know what I'm saying? So what? they had that one spike. They had that one spike. I started stacking my bread. I stacked about fifteen thousand. Mm-hmm. They slowed down again. I say, yo, you can have the truck. Once you tell them that and you serious about it and you actually go to the yard, they magically pop up with all this special freight. To the point where I was like, yo, I ain't even, it's, it's too late. I, I, already, I already put the money down on the other truck. I'm gone. So I went to Lone Mountain, and uh, I got a freight liner. That's the freight liner that you see on on my TikTok. I got that from uh, Lone Mountain. I paid it off. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started off with Landstar. So as, I got a, as soon as I started off with Landstar, I seen the load board. Now, at that at that time, when I was at Western Express, you had um, DMs telling me, yo, there's no load. There's nothing out here, da 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 once I was able to see a low board for myself, I was like, yo, man, what the heck? What are they talking about? Mm. All this freight out here? Man, mm. I got to work, like, right away. You know what I'm saying? My first week at Landstar, I brought, I brought four Gs in. Mm. I was like, cool. All right, so then I started learning it, then the rest is history. You know what I'm saying? Like, as long as you got access to a low board, that's how you know if there's work or not. If you don't have access to a low board, DAT low board or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then you got somebody on the other end telling you what it is. You just really out here blind. Like, you don't know what's going on. So they you... telling you some bullshit. Like, even oh. um, with Hazel said, I pick up I pick up a lot of loads out of a certain area, and TMZ drivers um come out of there. And they get the Raycon. But I showed one dude the Raycon that I got, opposed to the Raycon that he got, and I got the load from TMZ. It was a load going on to Massachusetts. He, it was from Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. It was about maybe like I think three hundred miles, something like that. And he got it for a thousand. He was like, "Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's still good money." I showed him my Raycon. I said, "Yo, TMZ, your company gave me the same load that we both doing for nineteen hundred. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's a it's slapping a difference them, in sla- Raycon. Them in their face, damn, that's crazy. And they and, and they making and it was crazy oh, if you don't. They 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 making it like the 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 companies. Like when you lease, you know, when you lease through a company and all like that, they making it like you making good money, but you're not though. You're not, you're not. I mean, you get benefits and all that other stuff, but it'd be so much money left on the table. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you can't, you can't really, you can't really pay the drivers that much anyway because they don't own the truck. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't expect too much if you want, if you want more money. You got to take on the responsibility. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't. You you don't you feel. Take on the you you don't feel lease drivers are doing that through a company. You lease, don't. You don't think they're doing it or, or company. You mean company drivers? Or, no, or no, no. Lease, lease drivers. drivers. Lease drivers through a company. Oh, lease your lease drivers here. They're taking on responsibility. But this was a company driver I was talking about. But oh, even okay. the lease drivers sometimes get met, to get uh, fucked over. Man, that's because they pay. People. That's crazy, man. Let's let, let's rewind it back, man. Since you mentioned uh, Western Express, and we know that Western Express is one of these companies that's you know that's a second chance company. It's also one of them type of companies that that brings you brings a company driver in. They say if they did have some skirmishes on their background, they the type of company that'll bring you in at like thirty cent a mile or whatever or whatever cut rate. Uh, cent per mile that they getting 
that they trying to get off of you. So what you were saying that since they had a spike in all the all the company drivers that that they was pretty much fucking over, they was fucking yeah. you guys over too. Yeah, at, at one point, yeah, you would you you would see like it would be a whole line of uh, owner operators. We just we bringing it under a thousand. You know what I'm saying? And we sitting in, and the thing about it is that it was frustrating because we sitting in busy areas. Like, there's no reason why. Well, at the time, you know what I'm saying? Right now, it's kind of shaky, but in 2017, 18, I'm sitting in Jersey. I'm sitting in Baltimore. I'm sitting by port. You know what I'm saying? You could always grab something. At that time, you could always grab something out of Jersey. You could always grab something out of the port. And I had my twin car. We was grabbing stuff out of the port. We could grab lumber. We could deadhead somewhere. We would be, I will be sitting for like, not just like two, three days. You know what I'm saying? To the point where it's nothing. And then you come across, they'll give you some bullshit. And you'll bump into like a Western Express um, company driver, and you how you have a conversation like, "Yo, you been busy?" The drive company driver to tell you, "Yo, I've been turning loads down." You're like, "What?" You know what I'm saying? So it's like they they really want to just bring in, uh, because they're not bringing in money when it comes to the lease, and they bringing in more money by running the company drivers. You know what I'm saying? So, wow, company drivers gonna get priority. That's, that's how I feel. I don't know how it is now, but that was crazy. that was a couple years ago. So that's crazy, but it's yeah. a good thing that you uh, that you stepped away from that, man. Because you, uh, it sounds like you wasn't making no money at all. It looked like you was losing money if you was leasing. Yeah, at the time, I was making like a hundred and fifty thousand a year. Um, it might sound like a lot of money, but it's just, it's really not. Man. Uh, after taxes and other other things, I think yeah, that, I think that was my best year, 150. Mm. Um, what I was really trying to do was, you know, just pay the truck off, get the truck. You know what I'm saying? Once I had the truck, I could have did more things. I got that shit down only to 68 thousand. I had to walk away. I just yeah, I, nah. it, it it's kind of crazy in the way in 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 the way I'm listening to uh to your experience over there with with Western Express, man, because that is it sounds as though that they 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 did it on purpose to like literally slow you down so you won't be able to pay off the truck. Make you literally yeah. walk literally walk away with all the money that you put into the truck. Yeah. And then you know all the breakdowns, all the other shit, that all that's coming out of your maintenance account. I look at it like this. If I could do it all over again, I wouldn't expect much. I would just expect my hundred thousand to hundred and fifty thousand and try to save as much as possible and walk away with a little bit more money. Cause you know, when you when you first when you first hit your first when I made my first hundred thousand, I kinda went nut. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? Taking care of people, um, you know, taking care of family. You sound yeah, like you, you, you sound like one of them hip hoppers that got their first uh they 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 first check and now they, they they hit the they hit Jacob the jeweler and uh they hit the they hit the Armani the Gucci that that's that's what you was doing when you hit that first check. <laughs> Not I want I want to say the designer stuff I would say you know maybe like you know pay a Jordan you know what I'm saying something like that I didn't go too crazy I don't buy, I don't buy thousand dollar shoes I might get like three two three hundred dollars sneakers but the thing about it. Somebody who bringing in two, three thousand, where I'm from, you know, Bronx. I was raised in Mount Vernon, you know, Yonkers area too. Everybody bringing in like four or five hundred a week. So you know what I'm saying? You, you, it's like you, you got a different type of walk. You got a different type of attitude. And when you go certain places, it's kind of like when you make a certain amount of money, you don't even, you don't even care. Like, it's like I would go, like, it's not, it's not an expensive place, but let's say I'll go to Walmart. I'm just throwing sure. stuff in the cart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not even like, it's, it's whatever, because I know I'm a, I'm paying for all it. I want all of this stuff. So you want it. It's like, you don't look at it. You don't even look how much stuff costs. If you want it, you just get it. That's, that was my mindset. But then that slowly changed. You know what I'm saying? Once I, um, once they started slowing me down, I started checking, you know, pennies like, all right, why am I, why am I stuck on, like, I look at my bank account. I'm like, well, why am I stuck at like five, 6,000 when I'm making all this money? You know what I'm saying? You'll be blowing right. through the money to the point where, like, I'll make a hundred thousand, and I'm looking at my bank account. I only got like eight thousand. I'm spending too much money, 
So that was my first year. I was at Western Express for three years. Um, one year I was my first year was company, but I was I was um I was a trainer, so I was still you know still making some money. Once I became an owner operator, that's when I started watching my dollars. That's when I started saving. You know what I'm saying? So once I started saving and I seen how much money I can accumulate by not bullshitting and partying and clubbing and shit, I was like, okay, I can actually turn this into a business. That's what it built. It actually built my confidence to become an owner operator. I'm like, yo, I could do this. This is they not doing nothing. Like, what are they doing? Dispatch, like I could, I've done a dispatch myself. I broke all my loads. That's I don't sad. want nobody running because they don't know the lanes like I know the lanes. They can't, they don't know the timing. They'll book, I'm saying, having a driving manager, they'll book you on something that you it might be damn near impossible to pick up. Exactly. When you could have just picked something else up that's more manageable and then set yourself for another play that make better sense. You know what I'm saying? That's what's oh, up, but, man. Um, that's what's up, man. So it sounds yeah. like you it, it sound like you took everything, all the knowledge, all the experience that you took from uh the Western Express, the the ups, the downs, and you just took that and just put it into in into the outlet of what you're doing right now. Yeah, yep, basically. All right. Um, that's what's up, yeah. homie. All right, Rick, y'all. Yeah, Rick is exactly. in the building still. Hey, so let's uh, let's fast forward up to uh, up to this video that I caught you on, man. You know What's going on, boys? How you doing, buddy? Chilling, trying to keep it up. That's a good time. How much are they? Thirty? This forty. Forty. Wanna give it a try? God damn it! Yeah, yeah you got a good build out here. Trying to, yeah, trying to change shape. I'm about to get my weight fucked with me. The past couple of years, I've been putting on weight and trying to get it down. Yeah, yeah. I'm at the shipper now, waiting to get loaded. I'm hitting a quick pump, doing some curls. Hit a couple of those, and I'm gonna still hit the gym later on. But it's taking a minute, so I don't wanna waste this time, just let it go by. I'll probably get a quick workout in, do what I got to do. To reach that goal that I'm trying to hit. You know, this um, I, I I see you out there getting it on, and like I said, you you remind me of this guy called his name. He you look just like my guy too, uh, the Apocalypse. You know, he's uh he's a YouTuber. He's into fitness and all like that. You know, he's uh he's a he he was uh he was in the service. So you know, he did 20 years in the service and everything. And uh, I mean, bruh, caught diesel, man. I'm, I mean, you know, like I said, with you out there doing your thing, man. How, how did you kind of? Well, you, you doing flatbed, so that's that's work in itself. I, I, I can't do flatbed, bro. That I, I just can't. But that's work in itself, man. And I see you out there keeping yourself fit with, with all the, with all your workout equipment, man. What, what, what kind of got you? You know, kind of got you out there to you know to stay fit and stay tight you know what what, what what's your what's your thing bro it, it's it's kind of like a childhood thing and it's it's crazy how i'm saying this like dudes most guys that that work out it's been like enforced it's like it's been something like that's been done since like they were kids or somebody they must have been inspired by somebody and the dudes that inspired me was my cousin and uncles but the thing about it, they were like jailbirds in and out of jail. But they was always forcing me to do like push ups and pull ups as a kid, and it just came like a thing. So like I'm I'm in Mount Vernon. Everybody they had like the bartenders and stuff like that. So that would be like a thing. Chat who could do the most push ups? Who could do the most pull ups? Uh, who who bench, who could bench press the most? That was a thing like in high school, and it always stuck with me, and I never really let it go. So. It's not too competitive now. Like, dude, you barely, you know what I mean? Kids out here, they don't even live with you. They up there shooting each other, doing all kind of dumb stuff in the Bronx. But at the time, we was using our hands, and so we was fighting. You know what I'm saying? So you had to have some type of build to you just to stay, you know what I mean? Just to defend yourself. And, and that just stayed with me. Even being out here, you still, you can't be a small fry because dudes out here size you up. Mm. But I'm not, the, I'm not on that type of energy. I'm not a bully or whatever, but... You know what I'm saying? If I got to handle my shit, I just got to handle my shit. And that always stayed with me. 
from high school to, you know what I'm saying, to being out here. And it just, I kind of like took that over the road. Like, nah, I'm not, I'm, I'm always defend myself. I'm going to try to live. I'm going to try to stay alive and do what I got to do. So I always try to, you know, do a little workout, a little arm strength, trying to keep something up. Not to be too, you know, soft and, and I'm, I'm, I'll gain a couple pounds or whatever, but I don't, I don't want it to get too out of control. You know what I'm saying? One thing I out here do, you can't, you could, you know, lose it with the food and stuff like that right. because a lot of shit to eat and it's, it's just kind of like tempting. But yeah, I just, ever since I was like, you know what I mean? Like elementary school, just, you know, we're doing something, bench pressing, working out, work, you know, the, you know, work set. I'd, all that. It's a with me. I'd, I'd, I'd see you keep yourself together, man, and everything. And it look like every time you get a chance, you know, you, you know, you break out, uh, you know, your workout equipment, the dumb bars and all like that. Uh, I think in the video, mm -hmm. I think in the video, you was doing what, 60? What was that, 60, 40? Yeah, it was 40 pound dumbbells. Yeah, it was okay. strong, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was up, crazy. man. That Just was up. So by you doing, yeah, you, you know, know you know, by you doing, you keeping yourself fit, keeping yourself uh, working out and everything, man. I mean, what do you, what do you, uh, you know? I mean, what what is your thoughts on on truckers out here that's that's out of shape? Like, I mean, let let me put it like this: like, I see a lot of us like out here, like literally, literally out of shape and still driving. I'm not even, bro. I'm not even sure how they driving, guy. They can't even get they can't even get in the truck right. And I'm like, you know, and I'm I'm looking at that as as what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, inspiration to not be uh. that way. You know, put a little bit more, put a little bit more pep in my step. Instead of parking in the front, park in the back and then walk all the way up to the front. Because I mean, I know, you know, don't get me wrong. I, you know, I'm, I'm in my fifties, man. I'm, I'm 53 years old. I do see some cats out there that's in their fifties. That's, that's cut a little bit different than I am and all like that. You know, I'm touching about 250. You know what I'm saying? With a gut and all like that. But I, I try to watch what I eat out here. You know what I'm saying? I try to watch what I eat. I try to get a little bit more solids in me. Try to cut down, you know, I, I, I barely do burgers. I only do burgers in the emergency situation. But I try to get a lot of solids up in me, uh, you know, drink a lot of water. You know, I definitely stay away from the sugar. I mean, I do get a sugar rush every every once in a while, but I try to do that in moderation. So, okay. with with that said, man, you know, I got I got a jump rope out here and all like that. But you know, I try to I I I, I try to motivate myself to do it. How how do you motivate yourself to the to 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 keep doing what you're doing out here, bro? Um. It, it, it's it's all it all depends on uh like you you talking about your diet. What well, keeps me motivated? Cause sometimes I lose motivation. I I keep a hundred with you. I, sometimes I'm not even always motivated. Sometimes I might just be down. Like nah, everybody. What what it, what it really is, is is how you can control your stress. You know what I'm saying? Like your stress level and your mental. Like you you can't be always worried about stuff. If you got a lot on your mind. You know, you ain't even you ain't even thinking about working out. You know what I'm saying? So when you look, when I look at certain dudes and, and they out of shape, they might have a gut or all that other stuff. It's not necessarily that they lazy. You know what I'm saying? Or they might not maybe they not motivated or whatever. They probably dealing with a breakdown issue. They probably dealing with something with their girl, with their wife, the kids. You know what I'm saying? I say it starts with the mental. As long as you could clear your mind, and you could get you could be stress free. Working out, it becomes natural. Like you, you got time for it now. If you're thinking about, uh, let's say, turbo giving you any, uh, problems, you got death, you got a death light, your, your emissions light coming on, check engine light. Because it happens to me. I'm like, I don't even thinking about working. I'm, I'm more concerned about the truck because this is this bringing in the revenue. Once it's like, as soon as the truck gets fixed, man, I'll be working out like three times a day. Sometimes it's just the stress. So you got it starts there. You get rid of the stress. The stress is it actually stress puts on weight for you. You know what I'm saying? You could gain weight because of the stress. So it starts okay. there. Once you get that out, you get with the uh, the right person, the right woman. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna come natural, though. Like okay, okay, that's where it starts. 
That's what's up. We got to give you a horn for that one, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. My guy, Rick, man, thank you very much for stopping by, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, let everybody know where they can get you at, man. I, I found you on TikTok, but let everybody know where they can they can find you at, my guy. Yeah, uh, I'm on TikTok. Uh, I'm on YouTube. You can type in Regulated Freight Lines. Um, I'm on Instagram. You can just type in uh, Rick Camille, my first and last name. Uh, my Instagram, more well, my TikTok is Ricky, R I C K Y C eight eight seven. You get me? I'm I'm trying to focus more on TikTok now because that's something new. So I want to try to keep up with the with the current stuff. Yeah, everybody uh, everybody yeah, left YouTube for TikTok, man. You're not the only one. <laughs> You're not the only one. I'm I'm still committed to my YouTube, man. I can I I. I, I'm not a fan of TikTok. You know, everybody everybody that knows me knows that I'm not a fan of the uh, of the app. But I but I will I will say this: I have met some awesome some awesome people off the app, and you're one of them. So thank you very much for that, bro. Nah, no problem, no problem. I appreciate you having me on your podcast, man. No doubt, no doubt, guys. Y'all know the best conversation starts where. Where y'all? I, I can't hear y'all. It starts over here at the Lockout Man Podcast Show. If you guys want to jump on, y'all know what to do. 216-600-2090. Holler at your boy. This like my guy right here, Rick. Rick, man, I do appreciate you coming on to the show and chopping it up with me. Nah, no problem. Yeah, I'll let you. Feel there's something in the air tonight. Got a feeling coming over me. I swear that this is that place to be in the water, in the, the water, in the water.